Let's now consider some effects of unbundling international supply chains based on some work by Richard Baldwin. But please note, these ideas are considered speculative rather than fully established. Let's start with the simple point that today's international supply chain is often scattered in many countries around the entire world. One way of thinking about the older model of industrialization was that it was about building a self-contained, integrated supply chain within a single country. So, for instance, this is what both Japan and South Korea largely succeeded in doing, that is, building powerful manufacturing sectors, which in many cases used only a minimum of foreign content. Most of the production and assembly process would take place in Japan or South Korea. And often these countries used a strategy of import substitution, that is, keeping out some of the foreign products, to help build up their own national supply chain, for instance, when it came to automobiles. You can think of this older model of industrialization as being really quite far-reaching, because it would restructure virtually every aspect of an economy and a society, but at the same time, because it was so far-reaching, it was also hard to achieve, and most developing countries, in fact, did not do it. Now, in today's world, arguably there's a greater mobility of ideas, and because of information technology, it's much easier to spread managerial and technical know-how to many different parts of the world. So the current model of industrialization perhaps has to do more with producing simply a single stage or a single input in a broader production process. For instance, imagine a country producing just one part of a smartphone. If we look, for instance, at iPhone production, it's not centered in a single country, but rather different components are produced around the world, including this extensive list of countries. So in this new order, perhaps industrialization, or rather partial industrialization, it's easier and faster because you're just getting a single sector up to speed with information brought in elsewhere. But at the same time, that new industrialization is also less meaningful for the country as a whole. A lot of the new industrialization turns out to be about what are called development enclaves. That is that you have parts of developing nations which are quite productive, quite economically sophisticated, yet without transforming the entire country. Richard Baldwin in his paper draws an interesting contrast between Malaysia, pictured here, and Thailand, pictured here. In his account, Malaysia is more intent on reproducing an entire supply chain for automobiles, and he argues this effort has largely failed. Whereas in Thailand, they're more content just to capture particular aspects of the production process for automobiles and to rely more heavily on foreign content. The Thais have been more open to being simply a part of a broader international supply chain, and the result has been that Thais produce and export more cars, though do note there is less emphasis on local content, and thus this industrialization process is less far-reaching. If you use these points as a framework for thinking about the world, you will see Brazil as a country which is still trying the old path that is producing more or less integrated self-sustaining supply chains within the nation of Brazil. Some commentators have suggested that perhaps South Korea needs to be a bit wary. It faces the future danger that its supply chain, that its previous industrialization, will in some ways be unpacked and outsourced to other nations. This is one reason, perhaps, why the South Koreans themselves are so intent on now building up their service sectors. In this new model, it may well be that import substitution is obsolete and doesn't have much of a chance of working anymore. A lot of developing nations just aren't going to get that integrated, nationally contained supply chain anyway. It really is a fundamental question about the future of the world, just how much will economic development go beyond particular enclaves within larger nations. Simply for raising this issue, Richard Baldwin is to be commended. The key source I've drawn on here is a very provocative paper by Richard Baldwin. The citation is here, and it is available online and free. There's also a very provocative, very short piece online by Danny Roderick, and that's called No More Growth Miracles. <laughs>